Hey Waffle Gang, I do hope you're well. My name is Mark and today we're checking out some more Reddit stories. And if you do love a Reddit story, why not consider hitting the like, subscribe, maybe that notification bell too. And let's crack on with today's first story. Much love guys. Now today's first story comes from the Am I the Arsehole here subreddit and says, Am I the Arsehole for not buying my fiance's brother an expensive wedding gift and given second thoughts about our relationship? I, 32 male, have a successful business in New York City, and I'm engaged to my fiance, 26 female. We've been together for a few years and we're planning to get married in June 2025. I'm doing pretty well financially and I recently bought a house where she'll move in after the wedding. I'm really close with my younger brother, 30 male, and we've been best friends for as long as I can remember. He got married in April and as a wedding gift, I surprised him with a Rolex he's been eyeing out for a while. He didn't expect it and was over the moon about it, which made me feel great because I love him to death. Now, here's where things get sticky. My fiance's older brother got married two weeks ago and leading up to his wedding, she kept making comments about how much her brother loves Rolexes. She mentioned it here and there and I didn't really pay much attention. For her brother's wedding, I decided to gift him a $2,000 prepaid credit card as a honeymoon gift. I thought it was a generous gesture and he seemed grateful. But after the wedding, my fiance started acting strange. Today, she finally told me that she was disappointed in me. Apparently, she convinced herself that I was going to get her brother a Rolex, just like I did for mine. She even hinted to her brother and some of her friends that I was going to buy him a fancy gift like a Rolex. Now she's saying that I was cheap because I only gave her brother a $2,000 gift and how it doesn't compare to the $20,000 I spent on my brother's watch. I'm honestly shocked and upset. Why would she think I'd spend that kind of money on her brother just because I did it for mine? I love her brother, but there's no comparison between him and my own brother, who's my best friend. I feel like she's completely overlooking the fact that I gave her brother a gift that most people would consider very generous. Now I'm starting to have serious second thoughts about this relationship. I never imagined she'd put this kind of pressure on me or act like I owe her family the same kind of money I spent on my own. I'm thinking of confronting her, but I'm wondering if I'm missing something here. Am I the arsehole for not buying her brother a Rolex and being upset about her reaction? Yeah, I'll be having serious second thoughts as well. You gave this person $2,000. Like, that's an insane gift. I don't think there's really much more to say about that, but Beat says not the arsehole. If that is the kind of expectation she wants out of you, you better reevaluate your relationship with her. Silver Queen B says she probably can't wait to get married so she can spend his money, like on a Rolex for a brother. X School says lol, yep. She probably told her brother after she gets married she'll make it up to him. Yeah, rolling the dice OP. Gonna regret marrying this one if you do. Apart Foundation says right, her mask has slipped. She has now revealed that she's marrying OP's wallet. I can't imagine someone calling $2,000 cheap. Hell, if I got a $2,000 gift card for my wedding, I'd be giving that person a thank you gift. Not the arsehole OP. You have now seen the red flag, and now it's time to run away from the bull. Teresa says, not the arsehole, she's a gold digger. If your fiancé wanted her brother to have a Rolex, she would have bought it for him. If this relationship continues, you need a prenup, preferably one that protects your premarital assets future income, retirement accounts, and limits any post-divorce support. A reaction when you tell your fiancé that you want a prenup and to have separate finances will tell you everything you need to know. Uncommon Delusion says, I'm not saying she's a gold digger, but she moved to the mountains in California in 1849 with some pans and a pickaxe. OP comes in with her update and says, it's been a few days since my original post and I've gone through many of your comments. Before I dive into the update, I want to address some common questions. First, a lot of you criticize me for giving my brother a Rolex as a wedding gift, saying a wedding gift should be for the couple. To clarify, I did give my sister-in-law a separate gift, a gold jewelry set from her favorite brand. Second, many of you said some harsh things about my fiance, questioning whether she even has a job. She's currently completing her PhD with offers from both Meta and Google. I have no doubt she'll be earning a great salary when she finishes. As for our age difference, she's 26 and I just turned 32, so it's only a five-year gap. It's disappointing that some of you assume she was with me just for money. 
Also, for those who asked, she gave my brother a gift worth $1,000. Now for the actual update. I asked her to meet me for dinner and after we went to a nice restaurant, we headed back to my place. I brought up the tension that's been building in our relationship over the last few weeks and she immediately blamed me, claiming I embarrassed and insulted her brother with the gift I gave him. At that point, I nearly lost it. I reminded her of everything I've done for her over the years, including letting her live rent-free in my old apartment, which I could easily rent out for $3,500 plus per month. I was too drained to argue any further, so I brought up the topic of a prenup. I told her it was in both of our best interests to sign one before getting married. Her reaction was intense. She went wide-eyed, started yelling, and accusing me of believing she was only with me for my money. She was furious that I would even consider divorce after arguing for over an hour. I finally said I needed more time to think about our relationship. She asked if I was breaking up with her, and I said yes. She went quiet for a few minutes before asking what I wanted her to do with the engagement ring. I told her she could keep it. Then she asked about the apartment. I told her she could stay until the end of October, but after that, she'd need to find a new place. She seemed shocked by my answer, though I'm not sure what she was expecting. In short, we've ended our relationship. She tried calling me today, but I was in a meeting and didn't pick up. She later texted me asking if we could meet Saturday, and while I agreed, I've already made up my mind. I'm not going back to her. Her dad reached out, and while we've always gotten along, he was understanding and wished me the best. On the other hand, my mum isn't happy with me, mostly because she got close to her and I didn't share the real reason behind the breakup. It sucks, especially after all the time and energy I invested into the relationship, but honestly, I'm glad it happened now rather than a few years down the line. Going forward, I'm not rushing into another serious relationship unless I find the right person. Time to enjoy being single. Joe MC on the back of that one says, buying your brother that Rolex was the best money you've ever spent because what you learned about your fiance was priceless. Yanga Gully says, I think you made the right decision. She's going to be earning a great salary soon. Why wouldn't she want a prenup? A prenup is two-sided so she could ask for whatever she wanted too. So yes, good decision. Worldly Kick says, yeah, tough but right choice. She was a red flag and was in it for the money. OP needs to have a sit down with his mum though. Much Recording says, I think at the heart of it was an utter lack of appreciation and entitlement that hurt OP. That attitude killed the relationship. And one more from Careless Ability who says, I'm not sure what kind of income bracket she lives in to think a 2K wedding gift is somehow insulting or embarrassing. But I grew up in a tax bracket where $200 was on the very generous side. But if she's going to react like that, you're better off. Hell, I receive a gift for 20 or 50 quid or whatever, and I'm like over the moon with that. <laughs> but what about you guys? What do you guys make of this situation? Do you think OP should have broke up? Do you think there was a way around this where they could have worked it out? Or do you think she was just in it for the money? Let us know your thoughts down in the comments below. And let's move on to another story. Now, our next story comes from It's Not You, again from the Am I the Arsehole here subreddit, and says, Am I the Arsehole for getting angry at my wife for kissing her best friend? Me, 30 male, and my wife, 28 female, have been married for two years and dating four years before that. Let's call her Maya. Maya has a best friend named Ella, 28 female. They met in middle school while I only met Maya in college. They're really close, but always say their relationship is platonic. Ella is really touchy and likes to get real close to her friends a lot, especially with Maya. Now, I don't really mind the hugs and occasional kisses on the cheek, but what really bugged me was when Ella kissed Maya, lips to lips. I'd like to add that Maya is bisexual. You may say that I'm just being insecure, but if I just kiss my girlfriend just because and say we're platonic friends, most people would say that's cheating. And that's what I feel. So that kiss happened when we were hanging out with mutual friends. When we went home, I expressed my concerns to Maya. I told her that the kiss made me really uncomfortable and I don't want to do that anymore. Surprisingly, Maya got really defensive, saying that it didn't mean anything and it's just what girlfriends do. We had a little back and forth leading to me sleeping on the couch, but I don't really think I'm in the wrong here. Am I the arsehole? The first commenter says on the back of this one, not the arsehole, I doubt your wife would be okay with you platonically kissing your best female friend on the lips. 
Sith Master says regardless of whether the kiss was platonic or to a person of the same gender, it's still considered cheating kissing another person like that in my book. The Fuente says it's cheating, period. The excuse of it's not cheating if it's with another woman or person of the same sex does not work any longer in today's world. Also, OP also failed to add that Maya is bi, but his wife also is bi. He just doesn't know, didn't want to say or is playing dumb. But the fact is, OP was un uncomfortable with it and, you know, there's obviously clearly some other stuff with the, the touching that's going on as well. So when they got home, OP rightly brought it up and expressed their concerns and said they didn't make it feel comfortable, to which she played it down. Which, you know, it's just not on in my opinion, but... OP did come in with an update and said, since someone asked, here's an update. It's been about a month since I last posted and a lot has happened since then. I stood my ground against Maya and demanded an apology from her. We got to argue in and she left to stay with a friend. Guess what? She went to stay with Ella. I honestly can't with the audacity. Your partner is worried you might be cheating on them, but instead of reassuring them, you went to that person's house to cool off after your argument. To be honest, I was still second guessing my confrontation. So I talked with some friends and reminded me that what I did was right. They gave me some advice such as if I really want the marriage to work, we could go to couples therapy or if my line ends here, I should just get divorced. You might not have agreed with me, but I chose the former. I tried to contact Maya, but to no avail. Instead, Ella called me and cursed me on the phone, telling me that I'm an asshole for arguing about their so-called friendship. About a week later, Maya contacted me and said that my blatant gaslighting and insecurity led her to believe that we shouldn't be together and that she will be divorcing me. We're currently in the divorce process. Maya will not talk to me unless it's by her lawyer. Our mutual friends are siding with me, so I'm grateful for that. Honestly, if Maya did or didn't cheat on me, I wouldn't care anymore. The whole situation has changed my image of her. I do not think we can work this out with all that has happened. And to those who might be asking, no, she was not like this before. We've gotten into arguments as normal couples do, but we have worked through those together. Maybe me addressing Maya and Ella's relationship hit a nerve that she didn't knew existed. But alas, our relationship has hit not a bump, but almost a mountain. I will be going through with a divorce and will not be posting any updates soon nor later. Thank you for the advice as well as validation for my feelings. Tigger Girl UK says, wow, that she's saying you're the one gaslighting. She is the one who is bi, also kissing a person of a gender she is attracted to. She is the one claiming people who are just friends do this all the time and that you're being insecure. This is the very definition of gaslighting. Badass Vixen says it's a sad outcome, but you're not in the wrong. You stood up for your boundaries and self-respect. Stay strong and take care of yourself through the divorce process. Slam Slam Old Hot Damn says and quotes that last comment saying you stood up for your boundaries and self-respect and then says, did we read the same post? Because this guy tried to stay with her even after she treated him like complete shit and it was her that initiated the divorce. If it went OP's way, he'd still be in this relationship. He certainly doesn't have any self-respect. Dude needs some serious soul searching on why he felt he needed to work it out with someone who treats him like this. But now I'm going to turn this one to you guys. What do you guys make of this situation? And let's move on to another story. Now, our next story is from our very own subreddit, r slash mark narrations from interesting we 161 who asks, am I the arsehole for saying no to grabbing an extra copy of notes for a friend because he couldn't be bothered going to class? Hey, Waffle Gang and Mark. Hello there. <laughs> Hope you're all doing well. My story isn't one of a huge incident, but I would just like to know whether I'm in the wrong here. I'll accept the verdict regardless of what it is. So let's get into it. English is not my first language, so please excuse any grammar mistakes. I-24 female was decently good friends with my college schoolmate, 25 male, whom I'll call Aiden. I say was because Aiden and I had a fallout a few months ago and are just starting to rekindle our friendship. I wouldn't say we're close right now, but we're definitely cordial. I won't go into detail on what happened, but there were things Aiden did unintentionally that were really disrespectful and hurtful towards me. Aiden and I usually help each other with notes when one of us can't make it onto campus, 
and we used to meet up in school to study together whenever there's a big test. We have an upcoming test that was worth a hefty percentage of our grade, and since Aiden had work the same day of the lecture, I grabbed him an extra copy of the handout, which he greatly appreciated. Last night, I texted him asking if he wanted to come to school early to study and suggested we meet at 10 a.m. He said, sure thing. Fast forward to this morning, I arrived on time. I saw two of our mutual classmates sitting behind the seats I chose and we made some small talk before I opened my laptop to study. Aiden texted me saying he would arrive at 10.30. I was a bit annoyed that he would be 30 minutes late, but oh well. 10.30 arrives, he's not here. 10.45, Still not here. Our next class was at 12 and I had to make the 15 minute one way walk to the nearby college mall to get some lunch. Had we started on time, we would have gotten quite a few questions clarified by comparing notes and could have gone through some practice questions. Aiden finally arrives at 10.50, but instead of sitting down and at least saying, sorry I'm late, let's get as much as we can done before class starts. He saw our mutual classmates and just started talking to them. Keep in mind, he went straight to talking to them without even saying hello to me. I thought to myself, okay, I'll just go to the bathroom first and then he'll be ready. I come back and what do you know, Aiden was still talking with our classmates. Fair enough, if it was school related, but they were full on casual conversations. At that point, I just decided to continue studying by myself instead of wasting my time waiting on him. 20 minutes goes by and Aiden was still continuing the conversation. I couldn't help but feel annoyed that he just wasted my time like that. I could have spent an extra couple of hours sleeping before heading to school. I lived two hours away from campus. Without telling Aiden I was leaving, I packed my stuff and grabbed my bag to head to the mall. Aiden must have finally started to wrap the conversation because he immediately went after me and asked me where I was going. I answered accordingly and he said he'll come along. As we finished lunch and walked back to campus, he started saying he was considering ditching class and just going home. I was confused because that meant he would have come to school for nothing. I told him that the lecturer will likely provide us with more information in regard to the upcoming test and maybe some practice questions. Aiden then asked if I can just grab an extra copy of notes for him and fill him in like last week. Maybe it was me being annoyed at him being late, not apologizing and just spent any remaining time talking to our classmates instead of sticking to our plan to study. I firmly told him no. I said that I grabbed him a copy last week because he had work and actually couldn't make it. But I was not going to save his ass just because he can't be bothered when he's already physically on campus. Aiden didn't try to argue and went back and forth for a while on whether to stay. In the end, he decided to head home and just look at the lecture slides. I went to class with my friend group and surprise, surprise, the lecturer gave us handouts as well as mock questions that are similar to the real test. My friend asked if I really was not going to grab Aiden a copy. I replied that I won't, that since it was his choice to leave last minute and not come, he can bear whatever consequences that come with it. I'm now starting to feel a bit bad that I was so blunt and maybe rude with the way that I talked to Aiden. But he was the one who blew me off and wasted my morning. So guys, am I at fault there? Am I the arsehole? Absolutely not the arsehole in this situation at all. And I wouldn't even let it play in your mind just a, just a little bit. Consequences have actions. You know, maybe at first I was thinking, oh, he's late. And he wasn't able to get in touch with you because of some like family emergency where meeting you is at the back of his mind and he wasn't able to get to his phone for whatever reason but it wasn't the case at all you know he's just taking advantage of you being a good person and helping him out when you can and it just feels like and i know it sounds horrible to say like one of those one-sided friendships where he's going to keep taking from it the more you allow him to do so so good on you for putting your foot down in this situation and, and like just being no you know, this is your responsibility. But Shadow says not the arsehole. If he isn't willing to deal with the consequences of his decisions, then he needs to make better decisions. You helped him out when he had a legitimate reason for missing class. If this time he got sick or started to feel ill, that's a different story, but it's not. This case, he's just skipping class because it seems like he doesn't feel like going to class. That's a problem of his own making that he needs to dig himself out of. Soft Shoulder says not the arsehole. As I see it, there's a few things going on here. First, you were there very early because you had agreed to study. 
You got studying done by yourself, but essentially he wasted your time. That would have irritated me as well. Then he ignored you. College age me would have been bothered by this a lot. The older wise me thinks that letting this part get to you is just unnecessary stress. Finally, how lazy or whatever do you have to be to show up on campus and not go to class? Honestly, I think this friendship isn't the best for you. It's already on thin ice due to past issues. You seem pretty serious about your studies and he is not. He's had an extra stress to your life with his attitude and laziness. You aren't responsible for him. You can be helpful, but that's your choice. He was there. And exactly what Soft said there is like, what is, that, what is this relationship offering you? What is he bringing to the table in this friendship? Just seems like one of those typical people that takes, takes, takes. And we're going to leave it there because I would love to know your thoughts on this. What would you say to interesting we, the OP of our story? What would you advise them? Let us know your thoughts down in the comments below. Now, just a huge thank you from the bottom of my heart for getting involved in today's stories. Your love, your support, your time always means the absolute world to me. So thank you so, so much for being involved. Truly, it's absolutely amazing. And hopefully, I'll see you in the next one. Take care and much love.